This is the back of the Heathkit SA2060 Alpha uh, roller inductor antenna tuner. A very reliable heavy duty antenna tuner, but I've encountered one problem with it. And that has to do with this input connector on the back of the selector switch here. And this thing gets loose like this. Now I put a right angle connector on here and a big RG8 and I do move the antenna tuner around from time to time which puts some stress on it. But rather than having uh, SO239s with four little screws that screw it into the chassis, it has a lock nut and the lock nuts on the inside. And so what I have to do now is remove this whole switch assembly in order to get it tight. So to get this uh, switch assembly and input uh, coax switch assembly off the back uh, you have to look at how it's constructed and you see that it seems to be that there's these long screws with the feed-through insulators that go down and attach to the switch and so as nearly as I can tell I have to remove these nuts flip the straps up uh, remove the nuts underneath take the feed-through insulators off so the whole thing can slip off of the back. There's uh, three or four screws in here that have to be removed. Um, the shaft should pull out uh, so we'll loosen it here and that should slip up here. I've made an alignment mark so that uh, I can line the switch and the shaft back up in the right position. Uh, and there's a uh, a wire going through here. I presume this is the SWR uh, sensor and uh, I'm hoping I'll be able to uh, have enough slack to uh, flop this thing down and uh, be able to work on it. It's, uh, it's going to be a pain. I just took three little paper boxes of, uh, of hardware, they're, they're nuts and uh, screws and uh, nuts, and used those to uh, stand the thing on, the, on its end so it wouldn't fall over. So that was a story of that. So you need two, in two wrenches for this, a uh, 5 8 a quarter inch, and uh, I guess it's a 5 16 uh, So the ones you can't do with a nut driver or a screwdriver, you can put a nut driver or a screwdriver on these quarter inch ones. Oopsie, come on. Um, but these, uh, these up here are 5 16 so and back here, uh, you're not going to get in there with a screwdriver, so you've got to use a little wrench to get back in there. Of course, nothing is easy, so you need a 3 8 wrench to get on uh, this end of the strap, and I guess probably the other one over here. So you can just flip this out of the way, you don't have to remove it, and this one, uh, you don't have to do anything on the other end, uh, it'll just stay out of the way. I will tell you how I know this, but take a little masking tape and to cover up this hole here before you remove this hardware because it seems to magically like to go down in that hole. I won't tell you how I found that out. Don't forget your little piece of tape. Now because this is your lucky day, this is stainless hardware. So you can't take your magic um, magnet and retrieve a thing because it's not magnetic. Incidentally, you want to use the right size uh, Allen wrench to uh, remove the uh, shaft coupling. It's 1 16th. That's the correct size. So the switch assembly just pulls off the back. And I'm sorry to say that I've been in here before, and this is the second time that I've done this. And uh, this time I've got to figure out a better way to secure that nut on the uh, uh, thing. I'm very tempted. Oh, here's a, here's one of the nuts that fell down inside there. And I, somewhere in there there's a washer too that I've got to find. Oh, there's a washer. I better take those out now. Anyway, as you can see, there's a hex nut that holds this SO239 on. And uh, uh, it doesn't take much torque on the uh, outside of the radio on the on a connector if you've got a right angle connector on there to loosen it up. So you've got to unsolder the center pin 
uh, before you can tighten it and as you can see you really can't get in there with a wrench so I don't know what the answer has is um, it seems to me that if it had a uh, a bigger washer you could once you had it tight you could bend the ed ears of the washer up edges of the washer up and lock the nut in place that way uh, I don't know what I'm going to do here, um, but I'm going to do have to do something. Uh, you know, it's an electrical connection. You don't really want to put Loctite on it, um, but that might be what we have to do. There's plenty of surface connection on the other side of this connector here where it's making contact with the chassis. So I guess I can get this really tight and then take lock tight and put it on the threads and uh, hope that that will work. I don't know what else to do. Well in the end I didn't find any alternative other than putting a crescent wrench on this thing and tightening the thing with superhuman strength. Uh, I hate forcing crap, but it's only held there by a lock washer and a hex nut on the other side. So the only thing you can do is tighten the living shit out of it. Got to be sure to disconnect this wire that goes to the center of the uh, connector before you tighten it. And you got to do all your tightening from the outside. You'll destroy this whole SWR power sensor board if you try to get a wrench in there. So, uh, and make sure that you don't slop a bunch of solder in there that uh, will make a smaller gap between the center and the ground than uh, should have. Or when you run full power through this thing, it can, uh, can arc, although this is the 100 watt side. Uh, so anyway, I put what I would say is, uh, you know, in, in my educated guess, about uh, 80 or 90 foot-pounds of torque on this thing. It's about as much as you can do with an adjustable crescent wrench. And uh, did that a couple of times, just really tightened the living shit out of it. And I, I hope that's uh, going to work because this, there's nothing else you can do except replace this connector with the one that's got uh, four little uh, set screws and uh, there's enough there's enough room in there to do that and I would I would say offhand that I would have liked this a whole lot more if they had done it that way uh, because this is happening because I'm putting a right angle connector on it which gives some uh, torque arm on it and then an RG8 cable and then I'm moving the tuner around which is putting a lot of stress on this so I have to learn to disconnect it before I move it around. Okay there it is it's done it's clean um, it's tight that's all you can do uh, while you're in here uh, just check everything else. I put a wrench on these on the outside just to make sure they were tight just tried them they seem to be fine so uh, I will uh, put it back together and uh, learn from my mistake which is uh, if you're going to use a right angle connector on this thing uh, which maybe is not the best idea in the world but it's up against the wall and you have to do it um, disconnect the coax before you uh, start moving the thing around so you don't put a lot of torque on this connection. So now I'm just going to put it back uh, just the opposite of the way it came apart. Don't forget your little piece of tape. You don't want to get in the last stages of putting this back together and uh, drop a, uh, a washer or nut in there and have to take it all apart. Remember you want to get these nuts here, these 5 16 nuts, uh, good and tight. These ceramic posts are in compression. Uh, they're plenty tough. And remember there's a curved piece of uh, bus bar down in there. Yeah, you want that sucked up all the way um, so that it can't contact the switch. And you want this to be very solid because you're going to be 
uh, screwing on uh, more nuts and washers here uh, for these uh, RF bus bars. And in the process of doing that, you don't want this to loosen or tighten. So uh, get these snug, don't break anything, but uh, don't be mamby pamby on it either. Um, you know, 20 foot pounds is uh, not too much uh, to put on these things. Uh, just treat it like it was a, a, a tap it on a, uh, an engine that you didn't want to uh, come loose, and uh, you'll be good. Okay, when you're putting this back together, don't forget this one has to go underneath this one, so you have to put it on first. And don't forget to re-tighten this nut back here in the back, which is a different size. That one is the 5 8 I think. Yeah, that one is 5 8 or 3 8 excuse me. 3 8 back there, 5 16 here. Uh, get them both good and tight. This is carrying uh, the full output power of the transmitter, a kilowatt and a half or whatever it is that you run. And uh, if there's a high SWR, uh, the voltages can uh, really climb up there and so can the current. So you really want these connections uh, clean, bright, and tight. Okay, before you put the switch shaft back in, go back with your wrenches and double check the tightness of everything. I would put this one on finger tight and went on to do the other ones and I came back and double checked it and it was still loose. Uh, so I tightened it up again. And uh, go over to these connections on the uh, tuning caps and uh, make sure that they're tight as well because you've been loosening things and uh, just give everything a check for tightness while you're in here. Uh, it will save you a world of pain if you run uh, any power through this at all. Uh, you don't want anything loose. You don't want any arcing. You just want it to be reliable. And that's really what these antenna tuners are famous for. Uh, the only problems I've ever had with mine uh, was some uh, looseness uh, in this coupling here to the uh, uh, roller inductor when I first got it. Uh, it was non-functional. A guy gave it to me for almost nothing uh, knowing that it needed repair and I came in and uh, got this uh, lined up and uh, tightened up properly. And it took a couple of time, tries to uh, uh, to get it right, but uh, since then it's been extremely reliable. I've had no other issues with it uh, other than this. I get in here about once every two years and uh, just to shoot everything with deoxid, make sure it's nice and clean. And uh, there we go. So if this uh, doesn't loosen up again, uh, I don't expect to have any more problems with this for another 50 years. Okay, while you're in here, um, this is maybe one of the more fiddly uh, things to try to tighten on here. But these, uh, there's double nuts holding these wires coming out of this ballon. And then the, the feed through uh, screw and another nut on the outside tightening it. And so you need a pair of 3 8 uh, open end wrenches to be able to do this. It's a bit of a pain. I had to take one cable off to, uh, uh, to be able to do it. Um, and... Uh, uh, if this in this when this nut comes off, it's hard to get it back on because of the clearance another thing you want to look at And this one was fun, too uh, Here's this uh, See what this is. This is a connection between the two um, uh, Tuning caps and the center of the uh, of the uh, Roller inductor and you see there's a, a screw going through and clamping it. It's a slot head screw with a nut and a washer. And you've got to get, you've got to turn this around until the head of the screw is vertical and stick a slot screwdriver in there to hold it while you put a quarter inch wrench on the other side. It's a little bit of a pain, uh, but uh, that's easily overlooked and it's a little tough to do, but uh, you want to go after that and make sure these uh, connections are tight as well. Um, if you're new to this thing or if the thing is new to you, um, you probably want to take a little bit of uh, lubricant and uh, lubricate these uh, 
shaft bezels here, a little bit of light lubricant on the gears. Getting this alignment on these gears just right is crucial to making this work. Uh, if those gears aren't aligned on the shaft right, uh, the counter just won't work. And I had to fiddle with that for a while when I got it. Uh, but don't put oil on anything else. You can use deoxid uh, on these switches. You can use deoxid on the pots. You can use deoxid on the wipers of the uh, uh, tuning caps. You can use deoxid uh, on the uh, on the roller here. Um, wipe off any excess, and uh, everything should be should be good. Okay, putting this shaft back in. Uh, the end that goes in the switch has two flats, and remember we put a uh, a marker line on the, an indicator line on the on the thing so that it would go back in the right way. Although it really doesn't matter if you don't move the switch mark marking line on this end too so everything lines up so the switch push position on the front panel corresponds with the actual switch position. Okay when you put this back on here uh, just make sure you're getting a decent amount of bite uh, on uh, both shafts. Uh, if you get it positioned wrong the uh, set screw won't bite on, e on one of the shafts. So get that right and you'll be good.